All right guys, it's Ryan from RJ Martindale. In this video, we're talking about pricing and overheads. Winter's round the corner and we need to be ready. This is something I struggled with for the first seven years in business. It used to drive me nuts. From year one to year seven, I couldn't break 300 grand in sales until I got my head around pricing, overheads, and the most important is the P&L combining them both together. And that allowed us to now be doing over 150 grand a month consistently and the business growing 20, 30% year on year. So what I will do is imagine that I'm in a van on my own. I've got the board. I'll break down some overheads that you could be looking at across the year. We'll look into also adding an apprentice, market spend, somebody in an office, divide it by the months, the weeks to the days, and that will give you an idea of what you should be charging. And it may open your eyes to the fact that there's a big problem across the industry that we're not charging enough. It's something that's constant, like constant battle in my mind to try and get prices where they need to be in the right way. So yeah, two big problems. The first, not understanding your overheads and the cost to run the business, your van or yourself, which then results in a pricing issue. You're not charging enough to the customer. If you're not charging enough to the customer, you're doing them a disservice because you then, your business is not performing how it should be. You, you've not got any budget for marketing, so you're bringing low quality jobs into the business. You can't invest in a new van, tools, engineers, and ultimately grow the business. If anything, you start going backwards. What I'm gonna do here is break, this is super basic, okay? I truly, I believe that you should be running all your overheads and all your costs through your P&L. That's the information you get from your accounting software. You've got your CRM where you're pulling all your invoices. That then talks to your accounting software and it's the data from the accounting software that you make your decisions and understand your budgets, which then you can work out your pricing. Okay, but if we just, in its simplest form, we'll work it out across the year. And then once you get that dialed in, you can start looking at this on your accounting software and it should ultimately improve your business and how you make decisions. If you find any value in these videos, drop me a like and I'll continue to do more. They're a bit different than like the day in the life stuff, um, but I think they're good. I think they're good, especially at this time going into winter and especially when the trades, the trades across the board are struggling. So first of all, we're gonna list all the overheads. I've had a look at our accounting software. I've brought the figures down as if we've got one van. There may be some stuff that I've missed, so you add them to your list, but ultimately, you can do this on pen and paper or Excel. This is, if we're just gonna imagine that you, you don't understand the accounting software, write them down in a list. It can be pen and paper, and that's where we start. So this is what I've got, and this is a quick run through. So number one, We've got our van. And to anyone out there that thinks that they've bought the van so they don't owe any payments, you need to imagine that at some point you need to replace that van. So this is what I've got. Van, 500 quid a month. Van insurance, we roughly pay about a thousand pound per van. we we'll break it down, it's hundred pound a month. Fuel, this may be less or more, 500 quid a month. Wear and tear, this is of your van, your vehicles, your tires. You may think again, but I've got a new van. It's covered under warranty. You've still got the wear and tear of your tires, your MOT, and the rest of it. Give yourself 200 quid a month. You then, you've got your public and your employer's liability. Ours has shot up massively now. It used to be around a couple of grand a year, and now we're up to, our, again, we're around a thousand pound a month. But I brought this down to 100 pound a month, and that should cover both of them. In some cases, this, this may be less. You've got your phone, 100 quid a month. Accountancy fees, 100 quid a month. This may be less. Let this be a reminder, if you're paying too cheap, more than likely you're not getting good advice. But let's say we're at 100 quid a month. Subscriptions, 200 quid a month. Clothing, 50 quid a month. Tools, the, the tools were and tear again. Factor that in at 200 quid a month. For some people that might be a lot more. For others, they may, be, they may look after the stuff and they can keep this low. Office, 500 quid a month. We're, we're gonna imagine that we want to be in an office and that doesn't need necessarily mean like a big office, but a, a place where you can go and focus on your work as opposed to getting tied up in your van or at home. So you've got 500 quid a month there and in, in some cases you can get them self-contained where you've got your Wi-Fi and, and your bills included within that cost. That's where, that's where I started. Contingency, there's probably stuff that I've missed on there and there'll be issues that you will have on have with your jobs week to week. So I've put a contingency in there of 500 quid a month. 
These here that I put question mark, water rates, I mean, this is only a small one. We pay about 60 quid a month. But these two, as you do start to grow, these get bigger and bigger. When you first start out, you can look to have like you know, zero charges, no charges or whatever. But as you grow and your turnover starts to increase, bank charges and car charges just get crazy. We're paying around a thousand quid a month just to put money in the bank. So this is my run through and we get a total figure of 3,050, then what we're gonna do is add a commercial wage. So let's say you're gonna pay yourself, for example, 40K a year. You're gonna times this figure here by 12, which will total, camera keeps overheating, but we're rolling again. So we've times this by 12 and we've added to our commercial wage. So we've got 36,600, okay, is our overhead cost, cost 12 months. And then we've got 40K, which is our commercial wage, which will total 76, 76,600. At this point, we're gonna divide this by 48 weeks of the year. So we're gonna give yourself four weeks holiday. We're gonna divide it by 48 weeks of the year, which will leave us with, I'm clicking because I need to work the calculation out. So we've got 1,595 pounds per week, and we're gonna divide that by five, which totals, one minute, 319 quid, 319 pounds per day. plus VAT, because if you're not VAT registered, you certainly should be looking to become VAT registered. It's very difficult, especially if you're, if you're supplying material to keep under that threshold. So we're gonna be 319 plus VAT, which is 383 pounds per day. So that's the bare minimum to cover these overheads here and your commercial wage. And that's hitting this figure five days a week for 48 weeks of the year. 48 weeks giving you four weeks holiday. Now, you may look at this and think this is less or more, but let me tell you, in most cases, your overheads end up being more than you think. So even at this point, you can see at 383 pounds per day, this is still not covering an apprentice, market spend to grow the business, and potentially another engineer and you're still taking all the phone calls. So in a reactive space, whether you're an electrician, a heating engineer, a plumber, and you're on the phone all the time, this is still no good. So I'm gonna rub this off now and add in some other further costs that you need to be looking at when growing the business. So we're gonna go back to our original figure that was the overheads and the commercial wage. And now we've added in call answering service, apprentice, market spend. Now the call answering service we have factored in an office at 500 quid a month, but you're not quite ready to take someone on full time. This is the next best step that will free up loads of time. And this generally could sit between 700 and 1,000 pound a month. For this example, we've got a grand. This will free up some time. You'll not be answering the phone. You can focus on either doing the job to bring in more revenue or start just freeing up your time to see what's happening in the business as opposed to answering the phone all the time. That's our call answering service. You're then potentially gonna take on an apprentice. At the minimum, that's gonna cost you 1,500 quid a month. And we've got a small market spend of 500 quid a month. This is gonna get you into the zone of understanding marketing, playing about with spend as you grow. So overhead from the other page was 36,600. We've got our commercial wage at 40K, and then we've got a 36 grand um, <clears throat> from these three here. Total cost, 112,600. We're gonna divide it by 48 weeks of the year to give you four weeks holiday, which will give you 2,345 pound per week. Divide that by five, we need to be hitting 469 pound per day plus that. Total cost, 563 pound per day. So you can see, I'd imagine at this point, if you're out there charging three, 350, 400 pound a day, it is not enough. This is where we need to be hitting. And, and again, at this point, we've just paying ourselves a commercial wage. We've certainly freed up a lot of time and further down the line, your apprentice should start adding value to bring some more revenue into the business. But I'm hoping this 
opens your eyes to a lot of the cost. If you're unsure on any of this or you disagree with what I'm saying, put it in the comments and I'll try to answer the best I can. This is super basic, really basic. When you start understanding your accounting software, you'll see these figures like this with much more detail and clarity and you can see what's happening month to month and you'll make adjustments on the fly. But if you're not doing stuff like this, an exercise like this every three months, once a quarter, will give you an idea. And then from here, it's these figures then, you can start out working what your price should be per day, what you should be charging for your reactive jobs, your servicing. I've not gone into some of the like higher level stuff talking about margin, the difference between margin and markup. There's a lot more to it. This is basic. One thing that I've not factored in here is the VAT that you can claim back from your expenses, your suppliers, and your general overheads. We have charged it here. I always like to play worst case scenario, so at least you've no surprises further down the line. It's better to have a surplus amount of money as opposed to the other way around. But by the time you've factored in the VAT, bit of an offset, you will be better off. But overall, this is what you're left with. And let this just be a bit of a reminder, this video, to run through your overheads so you actually see what it costs to run a trades business and what you need to be charging to earn the money that you want to earn. Play about with this figure with your wage. Play about with the overheads and you'll see what you need to be charging to make it all happen. So I was looking, um, when I planned to start doing this video, I was having a look at what we were charging back in 2013 when I took over the business. So I was going over some of the figures and some of the old invoices. So back in 2013, my old boss, before I took over the business, was charging 75 quid for a service, including VAT. And I remember I didn't believe at the time that I was good enough, just because of my age and my experience, even though in most cases I was probably doing a better job. I then dropped it to 60 quid. <clears throat> so in 2013, we're charging 60 quid for a service. 2014, 60 quid, 1565, 1665, and then we progressed then five quid per year in increases to around 2021, we're at 90 quid. Then we went 96, 96, and now we charge 90 quid plus VAT, which is 108 quid. <clears throat> but even at that, everything else has doubled in price. Houses, uh, your vans, pretty much everything across the board has doubled. But the cost to your customer hasn't, which then results in engineers not getting paid enough, putting new vans, everything, just, just overall cost. But it's an eye opener, especially when you look at these figures and what we are charging now. I mean, we are trying to push the, push the boundaries in our area of the pricing. And as much as like servicing, we're charging 108 quid for a service. We're fully stripping down these boilers and we're doing a proper job. We're not in and out, we're doing the job properly. Repairs, we have a minimum charge up to an hour and a half. We charge 135 up to an hour and a half now. We used to charge per hour and I don't believe in hourly rates either. We sh you should really be looking to fix costs. So if you're going out to do a part, there should be a cost factored in that you'll work out here, plus your part with a margin. Well, we'll not talk about markup and margin, but that's, that's another video in itself but you really should be factoring all that into a set cost and giving that to the customer and delivering, like offering a high level service. If you can fix the boiler there and then, if you will, as opposed to going and getting the part, charge a premium for that, but get it done there and then. And then in terms of boiler pricing, you need to be looking at these figures and then seeing this is my base figure for fitting a boiler or whether it's whatever the product is for the day, how can you then add more value to upsell. So in boilers, it might be adding a, a filter, magna cleanse, smart controls, whatever you can do to bring that figure up whilst offering value to the customer. Then you've got recurring revenue, bringing in the monthly. It was something that I completely changed the business in uh, <clears throat> around COVID time to bring in recurring revenue. And now we're in excess of 30 grand a month that's coming in every month. And that all helps push these figures up. So yeah, those are a few things, a uh, few points at what we're charging and how you can start pushing prices, but have a look at your own business and just see how you can make that happen. I mean, the harsh reality as well is it's very difficult in one van, two vans to make it happen. Even when you get to three vans, <clears throat> the overhead does start to come down slightly in relative to one van, but you've got more management. 
you've got more engineers to manage, more surveys to carry out, but you've still not quite got enough margin to bring middle management into play. I would say looking at it now, it's only from getting to eight, nine, 10 vans where I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we can really, we're really starting to grow and push on. I've needed to stop for a break to get some milk because I'm losing my voice. But yeah, without sounding all doom and gloom, like Mr. Sinclair says, only 5% of businesses make it to 10 years. And another fact that I've heard this week is more businesses have gone bust in the last 12 months than in the 2008, 2009 recession. So that's why it's super important to be looking at your business, charging correctly, pricing correctly, so you can market for the right jobs, which then allow you to grow the business, continue on growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. It's as simple as that, especially with how inflation is and how competitive it is across the board. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you found any value, drop us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.